I don't know about you, but in the final week of this May 2024 update for World of Warships Legends, I have noticed a lot of, let's call it to be charitable, subpar gameplay. And I've noticed a lot of games like this too. This is a 5v5 all PlayStation lobby, likely because somebody on one of the teams turned off crossplay. Why would they have done that? Well, maybe they were intending to get a smaller 5v5 match like this, or maybe they were trying to avoid players on some other system, like the dreaded Xbox or mobile, because we all know those are terrible systems, and the system that you're not on is the one with the most potatoes. That's what you think if you are, in fact, a potato. I highly advise checking your premises. Anyway... You can look at a 5v5 match like this as an annoyance, and to be fair, I often do. To some extent, these feel like a waste of time. Or you can look at it as an opportunity to put on your carry pants and become a tryhard. That's what we're going to do in this game. We're going to put on our carry pants and we're going to pretend like this is a ranked game in Legendary Tier. After all, ranked games are often 5v5, and we don't get Legendary Tier often. But if we did, the Grosse Kerr first, legendary tier original German battleship, would be a great choice. It's very tanky, it's been buffed, it's got a lot of HP, and when it doesn't have to worry about nine other enemy ships and instead only has to worry about five, it does become even more effective. And this match will demonstrate that to some extent. But this match is more about battleship positioning, because this is a concept that I don't think the player base really has down-packed. We're going to see the typical battleship play from most of the battleships in this match. But our positioning, I submit to you, is the thing that carries this match more than anything else. And the leaderboard, I think, is going to agree with us by awarding us over 3,000 base XP. In any case, we spawned near the Alpha Cap, so we're going wide on the flank to play it, because it looks like our two battleship teammates are going to sit in the center. The Carl Johan apparently had a similar idea, and he comes around that island broadside, which is not a good idea, because while the Carl Johan is quite heavily armored, a lot of times that armor simply means the battleship shells are going to penetrate the armor, and because it's thick, they're going to arm and deal full penetration damage. That's probably why we took away nearly 30,000 HP from the Carl. We are, of course, aware that the Carl Johan has torpedoes, and any time there is a battleship that has torpedoes, what you don't want to do is push into it. Instead, you want to turn your ship away, point your stern at it, and make sure you are increasing the distance all the time. That is how you counter battleships with torpedoes. They are much less likely to torpedo you if you are sailing away from them. If you are sailing into them, you're playing right into their hands. And Carl Johan goes down, courtesy of, I think, the Yamato in the center, who manages to get the first kill for the blue team, which is fine but I want you to take note of the two blue battleships in the center. One of them is a Yamato, who is sitting bow in toward the enemy and reversing toward the map border. The other is a battleship whose identity I cannot remember, but he spawned nearest the Charlie Cap, turned right around, went for the center, and is now kiting toward the back of the map for reasons that are unclear to me. But what the Yamato, who is bow tanking in the center, is doing, and what this Ohio is doing, is sort of the battleship meta of World of Warships Legends. I don't know why this is, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to articulate this as well as I hope to. But basically, what you often see is battleships who appear to think the only directions they can sail in are forward and reverse. Wherever they spawn, whether that's the center or the flank, they go forward. Then the enemy ships are spotted, and they stop. At that point, they start reversing. That's what the Yamato is essentially doing in our team, who is reversing toward the map border. And then the Ohio is doing sort of the other side of that equation, which is when you see the enemy battleships stopped in bow tanking and reversing, you continue to push forward. And it seems to me that most battleship players ignore the flanks or ignore turning in favor of doing this. And I don't know why it is, because this results in stale games where you start to feel like, 
oh my gosh, the game is not cooperating with me. Nobody ever gives broadside to me. I've heard that sentiment expressed a lot before. The reason nobody ever gives broadside to you is because you're not going out and taking it. You can't just expect the enemy team to give you broadside. What you want to do is go out there and take their broadsides. And how do you do that? Well, you put yourself as far away from possible as your battleship teammates, and you try to create different angles. This Ohio, for example, he has to bow tank the Yamato that's reversing toward the border, and the other battleship out there is, to be fair, getting farther away from the Yamato, which is good. He is attempting to perhaps create a different angle on the enemy ships, and that's what you want to see. But here, in the Alpha Cap, we have full access to this Ohio's broadside, and the only thing he can do is reverse behind this island to protect himself from our shells. But of course, we're going to continue pushing forward now that we've secured Alpha and go toward the Bravo Cap. Charlie is being flipped by somebody, a battleship, I think, but our friendly Yamato is actually too far away from it to spot it. The Ohio, meanwhile, is going to try it again, I guess. He's going to go forward once more, even though we really haven't left our position. And now our thought process here, we have to think, do we push straight into the Ohio around the left of this island, or do we go right? Well, at this point in time, the Ohio is the only one spotted, but we know there are two other battleships, one of which is an Ohio, the other of which is a Yamato. We get spotted by a plane there, and we see the other Ohio. He's broadside out there. He's the one who actually flipped Charlie. And once again, he is going straight in toward our bow tanking Yamato. And he's giving broadside to us because of our positioning. And thus, we take a Citadel with the first salvo. Second salvo, only one overpen, because this is, of course, the Grosse Kerr first, which has the trademark German guns. They are infamously unreliable, and sometimes they hit really well, sometimes they barely hit at all. Once again, we'll try it. Front guns out on the Ohio. The results are not great, but maybe the rear turret of justice will come in and dispense some of that sweet justice against the Ohio's broadside. Will it? Well, uh, maybe. A little bit. Did a fair amount of damage, but in any case, we're going to continue pushing forward. We sort of want to get behind these guys at this point due to the position of our teammates. And this Ohio, who's sort of sitting here, we want to persuade him to go forward. One of the friendly battleships is getting closer and closer to the Bravo cap, which is fine. These guys are essentially going to be the hammer to our... or the anvil to our hammer. And I don't want to say that what these two are doing is completely useless. They are essentially being a target and tanking the shells that are sent their way toward their bows. They are sort of, again, the anvil, and I am the hammer coming around to put the AP shells into the broadsides of these guys. But you see, none of this is possible without my willingness to move around the map and put my ship into different places. This, I think, is what you should be thinking about most of the time when you're playing a battleship, is where can I put my ship in order to access broadsides? And here's one of the answers. We've got the Ohio's broadside now, and he's dead because of it. Another reason why you shouldn't compromise your maneuverability. That's the other problem with the sort of battleship meta that we see in World of Warships Legends, where the ships just go forward, they stop, they shoot at each other's bows, and they reverse. That compromises your maneuverability, means you're stationary. And if somebody comes up around on your side, you don't really have the time to react. And so you might get citadeled and sunk, like that Ohio out there. Also, you don't want to just at the end of proceedings here, give up like this Ohio is and push straight into the two remaining friendly battleships. Now the Montana at the island here is in a position where he can access the broadside of this Ohio if he wants to come around the corner. And if that Ohio does come around the corner and he turns bow in toward the Montana, then he's going to be giving broadside to the Yamato and broadside to me on the other side of the map. This is Crossfires, Crossfires 101. The worst thing you can possibly do is put more than one battleship in the same part of the map. That is because you limit the efficacy 
of the battleships. What you want is the broadsides, and you don't get those if the enemy team is able to angle successfully toward only one part of the map. This is why you have to move your battleship around the map constantly and always try to find a different advantageous position. A lot of people will tell you that the role of the battleship is to tank, and to some extent that is very true. Now, we haven't done really any tanking in this game because the enemy team has chosen not to shoot at us at certain opportunities, and we just really haven't been in a good position for them to shoot at. And yet, we've done the most effective positioning in this entire match, and the leaderboard is going to indicate that. Why is that? Well, it's because we moved our battleship around the map. We went out there and we got the broadsides of the enemy ships. And with this last shot here on the enemy Ohio, we're going to go up to about 140,000 damage done and two kills in this small 5v5 match. And that still leaves one battleship left alive. It's a Yamato, who is, spoiler alert, AFK. I like to imagine that perhaps that Yamato is the one who turned off crossplay, and he's getting his just comeuppance by losing this match. Maybe not, who knows, but I always like to imagine whoever turned off crossplay is on the red team. Please, do not turn off crossplay. You just ruin the experience for anybody who gets sucked into one of your matches. And probably, if you are thinking that the higher tiers especially are too difficult for you, and they might be easier if you turned off crossplay and got smaller games, go back to the lower tiers and learn the game. You don't need to get smaller games in order to have success. You need to get good, essentially. That's my advice. And there's plenty of resources to help you do that. Just please do not turn off crossplay, even if it does provide me opportunities to make videos like this. I'd prefer 9v9s all the time. In any case, there is one more thing I wanted to talk about, which is, of course, tanking. And as far as tanking goes, again, the primary role of even something like the Gross Occur First is to put itself in a place on the map where it can access broadsides. But there are battleships like the Gross Occur First, which are heavily armored and really want to push in and brawl. That's fine, but that has to be done later on in the game when the numbers like this are thinned out. And that's one of the reasons, by the way, why the GK can be so effective in a match like this. It has a lot of HP and a lot of armor, and when there are fewer ships to worry about, it's going to become even more valuable because it's going to become very, very difficult to sink if it gets into a scenario where it's taking a lot of focus fire. That didn't happen in this particular match, but if there ever is a legendary tier season of ranked with 5v5, then it's probably going to happen a lot there. But even so, you are going to want to move your GK or your brawling battleship as far away from your battleship teammates as possible in order to create angles and get broadsides. Create crossfires, in other words. This is something that I think is lacking severely, especially in the high tiers but all across the game. People don't seem to play battleships with that goal in mind. The goal seems to be push in straight forward, make contact with the enemy, stop, invite them to shoot at your bow, and then shoot back at them. Doing that opens you up to HE spam. If you're a stationary target moving slowly in reverse, you are very easy to spam. It opens you up to torpedoes, and then it puts you in a stationary position for if somebody wants to flank you, access to your broadside. That is why you don't want to sit there bow tanking or really compromise your maneuverability for all of those reasons. And if you find yourself having difficulty pushing in and attaining positions like the ones I was able to obtain in this match in full 9v9s, well, might I suggest to you building into concealment with your battleship? Not just with the concealment mod. We do, of course, have that on the GK in this match. But notice our detectability by sea is 13 kilometers even. If we were just running the concealment mod, it would be a little bit closer to 14. But we have Kondo, rank 16, legendary rank 4, as one of the inspirations. And we're down to 13 kilometers. That might not sound like that much of a difference, 
but the stealthier you are in a battleship, the closer you can get to the action before you get spotted. If you're not spotted, it means the enemy doesn't know you're there, and they are not focusing you and taking your HP until the moment you do get spotted, in perhaps a little bit of an unexpected place because you are so much stealthier. At that point, you open up, you surprise the enemy, and you are able to get in closer without losing all your HP on the way in. And then, if things get too hot and heavy, you're able to disengage much easier. That's the value of building into concealment for your battleship. I don't know how much it came into play during this match, maybe a little bit, but in general, I think it's a good thing, and it may help you, especially in brawling battleships if you want to get closer. The problem, as always, is getting closer without sinking. Concealment will help you do that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.